Uh, hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Cosimo, and my talk is about getting dense human body correspondence using convolutional networks. Nowadays, uh, we can capture human body shapes in 3D relatively easily, but the results captured from the camera are just a lot of a lot of x, y, z points, and the computer cannot understand what is really going on in the scene. If we have the correspondence between human shapes, we can analyze a lot of things. For example, uh, you can know where your hand is, therefore you can know the pose and also the body shape of you. By finding correspondence across uh, different frames in a video, you can also know the action this human is performing, therefore it gives you a semantic meaning. So, how can we get such a correspondence? A lot of people have looked into this problem. First of all, if the two shapes are similar, we can use non-rigid registration to map the source mesh onto the target mesh. By aligning the source mesh to the target ones, we can directly get the correspondence and overlap between these two meshes. However, such a method may not always work under large post changes. Here we show an example that even with the state-of-the-art algorithms, the source mesh cannot be converged to the target mesh, therefore correspondence is not available. In such a case, a more proper way to find correspondence is to define a local descriptor on every point on the mesh and use a matching screen to, to find the correspondence. Of course, we can first uh, define the descriptors based on the local property of the mesh uh, so that you can match the shape of your hand to the shape of your hand on the other mesh. Such a method may get confused by symmetry or ambiguity problems. <laughs> Therefore, the performance is not guaranteed. Uh, other methods such as heat kernel signatures tries to use the global information to provide an unambiguous descriptor on it. However, such methods often require a almost complete uh, inputs. Since we still want to handle partial data as our inputs, recently learning-based techniques have been applied to uh, deaf, images, deaf images to provide a pixel-wise descriptor. Such learning-based techniques can also be applied onto a full human models to increase the accuracy. Uh, however, note that all the existing methods can only handle naked or skin-tight clothing human bodies. And our ideal descriptor should be able to handle all the other variations brought from clothing, including the hats, the dresses, or even the gas mask. How can we handle such a large variation of input? The answer is, unsurprisingly, deep neural net. A typical deep neural net will use an image as our input, and by ap applying a lot of uh, functions in the neural net, it gives us a feature descriptor describing the content of this image. We can further uh, do a classification by comparing this descriptor with a lot of uh, known descriptors with semantic meanings so that we know this image represents a puppy. In our case, our input are 3D models, so we need to first render the deaf images from the 3D models and pass such deaf images into the neural net and get corresponding descriptors. For every point on the 3D model, we can actually obtain the deaf images centered at that point so that we can get the corresponding descriptor and such a descriptor should tell us where it is in the human body. We can uh, synthesize uh, millions of uh, deaf images as our training data. So training data is not an issue here. However, if we try to train such a network using typical classification methods, it will only ensure that points that are located into the same class have a similar descriptor while points that are from different classes have really far apart descriptors. But what if the two classes are actually very close on the human body? You can see that if the descriptors are not the same, 
the prediction across the boundary of these two classes may be unstable and you will change suddenly from one place to another place. Therefore, we would like to introduce our new a chaining method to ensure the smoothness of the descriptor. That's to say, we try to smoothly embed the human body shape into a descriptor space. How can we preserve such a dis distance? Um, we propose a new multi-segmentation approach to achieve this. Let me take and show you an example. Consider that there are four points on the human body and we would like to enforce the descriptor of A and B be more similar than the descriptor between A and D because A and B are located closer to each other on the mesh. If we simply segment it into a lot of different classes, after chaining, it will only ensure the points from different uh, classes be far apart and it doesn't preserve the smoothness. But if we chain it using two different segmentations and chain the classification at the same time, note that A and D are located in different classes all the time, while A and B are classified into the same group 50% uh, of the time. Therefore, after chaining, A and B will be more similar than A and D. In general, if we use only one segmentation on the human mesh, we can only ensure descriptors that in the same class be similar, while points that are crossing the boundary be very dissimilar. But we can always add more and more segmentation onto it, so that as long as two points are close to each other, it will always be grouped into the same class in some of the segmentations. This will enforce the smoothness implicitly. Furthermore, we apply the segmentations randomly, so that uh, the closer these two points are on the mesh, the more likely they will be grouped into the same class. And after chaining, the more similar their descriptors will be. Here's how, how the segmentation looks like. We segment the human body into 500 different classes and we applied 100 different random segmentations and changed such classifications at the same time. Our chaining data consists of two parts. To capture the difference between shape and poses, we use the SCAPE and MIT datasets, which gives us the dense correspondence between them. To handle variation of clothing, we picked uh, over 2,000 meshes from yobi 3 d dataset and manually annotate them on sparse landmark points. We can evaluate our uh, results from neural net with the classical methods. By applying the descriptor, sorry, by applying the network to get the descriptor and find the closest match on the match, we can achieve a near state of the art algorithm performance. But we can further improve this by applying the non-rigid registration as a refinement and you will finally outbid all the existing methods. Let me show you more results. We can see that our neural network can predict a consistent descriptor across different uh, poses and shapes just like uh, the previous methods does. Furthermore, it can handle both uh, full and partial images in the same framework. And since the left and right side of the body is correctly classified, we can know that it actually resolves the symmetry issues. Our network can handle the single wheel kinect capture data directly, even without chaining with them. Note that the data is partial and the result is processed, processed per frame, but the result is actually temporal, smooth, and consistent across all the frames. Which means we can get a dynamic shape reconstruction from only partial data. Imagine that you can see the full person from only a single wheel. 
I would like to show more results in the poster section, but let me first summarize my talk here. Uh, our deep neural net can provide a consistent, consistent descriptor across complete and partial data under different shape, pose, and clothing. The performance achieves the state of the art, and such a uh, network provides us the possibility to capture the real semantic mean meaning rather than only the geometry of the meshes. Of course, uh, like other neural networks, we are, our performance is bounded by the hardware. For example, because of the memory limit of GPU, the resolution of depth image cannot be very high. And we can only handle human correspondence now because uh, that's the only uh, ground truth data set we can obtain online. But we, of course, we will expand our methods to other subjects in the future work. And thank you.